everyone, Amy Williams and Kiara here with Skellig. And in this video, we're gonna be outlining what architecture you need to be using when building a new life science greenfield facility. And spoiler alert, it's gonna be a unified namespace. So what is that? According to Walker, the UNS is an architecture that is the real time structured data and events of your business. And it has four minimum technical requirements of being lightweight, edge-driven, report by exception, and open. Now, I will be honest, when I heard that definition for the first time, I didn't really get it. I remember thinking first, what do these words mean? And after some intense Googling, then wondering, why are these four things the criteria that make or break this architecture? And maybe some other people out there have the same questions. Rather than just explain what these definitions are, I think it'd be better if we go back to the 3.0 architecture and address how we solve all of those problems and discover together what the UNS is and why specifically it needs to have these four minimum technical requirements. As we covered in the last video, a big problem with the 3.0 architecture is it has those discrete connections. Those are unfortunate because you do all of this engineering effort, this big lift to get data from point A piped directly into point B, where visibility then immediately dies. If I wanna get data from point A to anywhere else, I have to redo all of that engineering effort and validation. To fix that problem, instead of doing discrete connections, you should use a publish subscribe based message protocol for your data transfer. So rather than transfer data discreetly from point A to point B, you publish data from point A into a broker who then distributes the message to any number of subscribing clients. The easiest way to understand that is with an example. So we're gonna show that really quick with MQTT. Now, quick disclaimer, you don't need to use MQTT to build a UNS. However, it does meet all of our technical requirements and is honestly very easy to use, which is why I'm picking it for our example right now and actually our demo later. So let's do a five second MQTT overview. There are two parts that you really need to know. First, there is gonna be a broker that facilitates data messages, and then you're gonna have clients that either generate or consume those messages. We're gonna use right now a free MQTT client called MQTT Explorer that's gonna to connect to a free broker called testmosquito.org. What's awesome is I click connect and now right away I can see all of the data being published to the broker. By the way, all the data is being published to topics, which are the bold things there. This is fantastic because this is the most efficient way to scale data access. This broker is on the internet. So potentially millions, if not billions of people can see the data. The number of subscribers can just scale indefinitely and it has no impact to the source only needing that one outbound connection to publish data to the broker. And honestly, you don't need me to explain this to you. We all use the internet, we all use SharePoint, and gosh, we're even all on YouTube. We all understand the concept of publishing data to a single source to be distributed. For example, there is no universe in which Baby Shark Dance gets 13 billion views, more than Earth's entire population, by being discreetly shared, as in the content creator sends an MP4 link to each person who wants to view it. No, virality only happens because the video was published to one location where it then can be viewed by any number of people as long as they have access to the YouTube link. It is the same concept in your plant. All systems will have access to data via the UNS or in my simple example, via the MQTT broker. So. Let's take this back to our plant example. So here I'm pretending I have an on-premise local broker not connected to the internet. Before in the 3.0 architecture, we spent all of our time and money to discreetly connect my wave into my DCS system, which lost a lot of data visibility. Instead, what we should do is take all of its data and publish it once into our local broker, where then anything can subscribe to that topic and see that info. So if I connect in here, you can see that I'm publishing my wave temperature value of 27 degrees Celsius. 
What's awesome is now my ERP system before that would never have access to my plant floor data can see everything from here. And what's great is my ERP system never had to connect to the plant floor automation network. It just needed read-only permissions to my broker. Now, you might be saying, hold on, I don't want to have all of my sensitive business data visible to all other nodes in my plant. Don't worry. You can control what data a client sees by controlling what topics they are subscribed to. For example, let's say I have some top secret information here that I don't want this client to know about. What I can do is say, all right, client, you can only subscribe to the topic of public. And now all that top secret information is completely invisible to them. Now, this is fantastic because we have solved the problem of expensive data access. I don't need to make a million discrete connections and landing modules that have to be tested and validated to get data visibility. Now, I just need to have my systems have connections to my UNS, in this case, this example, my broker. And what's even better is not only does everything have full visibility, but they can actually add context. For example, my batch engine can publish the state of we're running right now. If any system creates new data, it can publish that into the UNS. And the point of the rainbow is to show that no data gets left behind. The facility is going to have tons of data access, which brings us to why two of our technical requirements are lightweight and report by exception. You need both these things so you don't crash your network when transmitting all of this data. Lightweight refers to using minimum amounts of bandwidth to transfer data. To send a payload, you usually need to package that up with some kind of header, which consumes bandwidth. MQTT is a very light protocol because it was designed to work with good old satellite internet on oil rigs back in 1999. And report by exception means you only publish a data point when it changes. So classic discrete connections rely on pull and response or like fixed scan rates where Maybe every two seconds it asks, what's the PV? Two, what's the PV? Still two. That creates a lot of useless network traffic. With report by exception, and if you're using MQTT, the broker doesn't ask, oh, what's your value? Instead, the source of the data just publishes information when it changes. And by the way, you can ensure the statefulness, the connection is still good by using heartbeat monitoring which basically the broker and the client ping each other to ensure the connection is still there. And the pings only use a few bytes of data, which is way less network traffic than sending an entire payload that has the value, the quality of the timestamp, et cetera. We have now fixed the 3.0 problem of data loss, but we're not done yet. Just throwing data into one spot isn't going to fix all your problems. Let's go back to that public broker. Do I have access to a lot of data here? Yes, I do. But can anyone tell me what var1 means? No, data without context is useless. That brings us to the next part of our definition. The UNS is the structured data and events of your business. As in anyone, and I mean like from your operator to engineer to director, should be able to look at a data point and understand what it's referring to. If you're using MQTT, the way to do this is by using ISA 95 part two, as the spine of your topic structure, which is enterprise, site, area, line. And one reason I love MQTT is making the structure cannot get any easier. It's just backslashes. So you type in enterprise, backslash, site, backslash, area, cell, you get it. And just like that, you have a topic hierarchy created that you can now publish data to. So ISA 95 part two gives you the backbone However, what populates underneath each of these topics is going to vary depending on what your process is. Now, there are two big pitfalls here that I want to warn you about. First, the only one who knows what your data ontology should be is you. A common issue we see is people will learn about the UNS and want to just buy one pre-built off the shelf. They'll ask, how much does it cost to download this topic structure? And Sadly, you just cannot buy a pre-built UNS. It has to be constructed. No one has the secret instruction manual that lists explicitly every piece of equipment will have these 10 magic topics and this is their payload structure every time, see page seven. Doesn't exist. 
And that's because your data structure is built for your business use case. For example, if I'm a contract manufacturer, my UNS is going to have topics that distinguish data based on customer that just wouldn't exist if I'm a site that makes it only internally all day long. And even within your site, each piece of equipment will have a slightly different data model because it has different attributes. Take, for example, a waste scale. That is pretty simple. It's just going to have a few data points for maybe the weight PV, the make, the model, maybe a work order for that equipment. But if you have a custom built module skid, that's going to look really different in your UNS. First, it's going to have a lot more IOTA model. And second, what if it's a multi-purpose skid that can do different functions depending on how it's configured? That manual formation set by the operator, that information needs to be modeled in the UNS. All of that's to say, be aware the UNS has to be built. And that's why you need to have some kind of data architect creating that structure. And I point that out because that role is new. 3.0 facilities didn't have this role. That's why they created a lot of useless data. If you want a UNS, it has to be built and you need that the architect role and or team to do so. Second pitfall, once you got that data ontology defined, it has to be enforced prior to publishing that data into the UNS. So let's go back to that like 3.0 example. Maybe my wave was coded to have the temperature indicator be TPV01, but in my DCS, it was standardized on just T-01. I don't want these two different naming conventions for the same attribute in my UNS. First, it is not intuitive. Are your new hires really gonna know right off the bat that T01 needs temperature indicator here, but T-PV01 means the same thing over there? No. And second, it's gonna be impossible for you to use any computer tools to analyze and compare those very differently named temperature trends. So before publishing to the UNS, I'm gonna model it at the edge into my standard ontology. For the sake of example, we can say that we'll use temperature 01 slash PV. And this brings us to why our third requirement is edge driven. It would be a mistake to think you could do all your data modeling after the fact in the cloud. At that point, your data inconsistencies have propagated throughout the plant and it's gonna be way too expensive to try to clean it. Fixing it at the edge avoids a lot of technical debt. And it's worth mentioning, there's more to edge driven than just edge modeling. You can also do computing for some real-time analytics, but I wanted to mention the modeling because I think that is a non-negotiable step. And the very last requirement is the software we use is open, which makes sense if you think about it. The UNS should be the full picture of your business. And you can't build that if you have context being left behind, trapped in some closed product. So to recap, the UNS is the architecture that has no data silos. All of your data is structured, accessible, and open. By leveraging broker-based message protocols, you completely alleviate the need for those expensive discrete connections that have to be validated over and over and over again. Instead, every node of your business, where a node could be your ERP, historian, operator, you name it, Every node just needs that one connection to the UNS where they can then publish or subscribe to data as needed. And the way that you're gonna build this architecture is by using the softwares that meet these minimum technical requirements of being edge-driven, lightweight, report by exception, and open. Now, sadly, I think a lot of people in life sciences have spent their entire careers working within these closed vendor ecosystems and are completely unaware that there are solutions on the market today that meet all of these requirements. That's why in the next video, I'm gonna introduce the architecture of the demo to expose you guys to solutions you might not even know existed. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you soon.